What is up guys? Welcome to another Life of Bliss. This week in the basement, we are going to be completing our shelves here in both the office and the bedroom. Um, it was going to be difficult to put the shelf directly on here and make any sort of transition from this window to the shelf. So I'm just going to build up this lip or this space here to where it's just a little bit higher than the window. And then I'm going to put shims to level it all out. And I'm going to put one piece of MDF coming from the window all the way out. So it's going to raise that shelf just by about an inch and a half. But I think it's going to look a lot cleaner that way than having a transition from the window to the shelf. So let's go ahead and get some cuts made and get started on that. is done so now whenever we set our three-quarter inch MDF on there and butt it up against the window it's gonna be a little bit of a gap down there we'll fill in with a few shims now the difficult part is gonna be this edge right here in the corner and being able to match that round but um, I'm gonna make a couple test cuts see if I can't get that angle just right or that curve just right and then we'll transfer it onto the MDF and um, the MDF is only eight foot long. This is about 13 foot long. Um, I'm just gonna have one seam right down the center of where the window is here or thereabouts, uh, somewhere where the window is. Um, but I'll make some test cuts, see if I can't get it figured out and get it cut up. So here's what I got down here so far. Um, I've got two pieces of MDF that uh, I've rounded off my corners, one for each side. Goes all the way flush with the wall there and the other piece is laying up there that will be in that corner. Took my router and I've got both pieces rounded over on both sides of the edge. So I've got a nice round over. Um, next, I've marked my line where I'm gonna be joining these two and I'm gonna be taking it at a 45 degree angle to where they'll join together like that instead of butting them up against each other because that's gonna conceal that line a little bit better. It'll conceal better on the front edge and I'm gonna take some, uh, some, actually some body putty and fill that in afterwards. So um, hopefully I don't mess up now because I don't want to do all this over again, but uh, yeah, we'll get it cut and get it lined up. So there is the ledge after it's all cut up. Pretty seamless, right? There's a little seam right there. Once you push it up and nail it down, you shouldn't be able to notice it. Plus I'm gonna use some body putty and go over that, sand it down, prime it. So we'll get the other side done and then we'll take all these out, give them one coat of prime so we can make sure the undersides are primed. Come back in, nail them down, fill them with body putty and then prime it one more time on the wall just to be sure everything's covered up. So while that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing some caulking. Um, what caulking does is it takes all these little cracks that are in the trim or the doorway and you throw a little bit of caulking in there and it makes them disappear. Without caulking, with caulking. So this is just important for painting. Um, anytime you go paint stuff like this and you see those little black cracks, uh, it's going to be distracting. It's not going to look nice and smooth. So. Uh, the caulking is there to fill in that seam and make the paint seem uh, seamless there. So uh, I'm going to go around and along all the baseboards, see that crack there, going to be doing that. 
along the door frames, around the doors, um, pretty much everywhere there's trim or a corner or a seam, I've got to go along with some caulk and uh, go ahead and run a little bead of caulk along there. pretty much ready to prime at this point. I'm gonna go over a few spots that need just a little more work on them. And then here in just a bit, we'll get the sprayer out and prime all the MDF up here. I did go ahead and put just one last skim coat on the seam just to make sure everything levels out nice. And when cutting these, I actually had one of the corners blow out over here. So instead of remaking this entire board, I just filled in this edge with some putty and I'll come back and sand it and uh, get the round off just like the rest of the board. I've got everything sanded, taped off, and ready to prime, so I'm gonna do two coats of primer on these and then finish up the trim around them.
the next step is to get everything cleaned up, a few things taped off, and we can go ahead and start painting and trim. Even though this is still an unfinished basement, it still took a few hours to go ahead and prep everything to get ready for paint. Um, since we already did the flooring, had to make sure that was covered and uh, taped off up against the trim to make sure we won't get any paint on there. Here's the bathroom area, just completely covered it. There's the back door there, as well as the stairway. So I got my sprayer dialed in. I actually bought a new tip. I bought a 211 tip. So it sprays about a four to six inch fan and uh, sprays a little bit finer mist and not as much paint. So um, that'll be good for the fine finish on the trim. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started in this area and just kind of work my way around the entire basement. So overall, everything went really smooth this week. Um, again, that uh, Graco X7 painter, I can't say enough good things about it. Um, the new tip, the 211 tip, worked really great. I've used a 313 tip before, and it just sprayed out a little bit too much paint. Uh, I had to move a lot faster, so this really allowed me to slow down and make sure I was covering everything correctly. So this next week, I'm gonna be working on getting the built-ins put in place and start getting the rock on the fireplace. So I hope you guys had a productive week. I hope you guys liked the video. 
Be sure to subscribe and check back for more updates on the basement building.